Oi fellow comrades, this is Squid Tart here and welcome back to another prediction video for the 2023 college football season. Today we are doing the Sooners of Oklahoma, a new member of the SEC that is soon to come, but that's for next year. We're doing this year. This is their last season in the Big 12, so I'm sure they have some expectations set on how they want to end their tenure in this conference. We're looking forward to seeing exactly what they have planned for this season. Before we get started, though, make sure that if you want me to do a team of your choosing uh, for a prediction, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and as always, I, I will respond accordingly. Anyway, let's go ahead and roll into the prediction for today, as I've mentioned, the Sooners of Oklahoma. So, Oklahoma, last season, they were a dumpster fire. In Oklahoma terms, uh, they were just terrible absolutely awful uh to put it to put it ever so now they weren't the worst team ever in the history of teams but they did finish with a six and seven record uh it was one of the worst seasons that oklahoma has had in this century uh probably the worst um just was not a very good team at all now this this wasn't exactly to be expected with Brent Venables. You know, this was his first year coming in as Oklahoma's head coach. They lost Lincoln Riley to USC. He comes in, takes over the tenure, brings in some guys, and, you know, with a brand new system, it was unknown how it was going to play out, and it did not play out at all in their favor. They lost to some really, really bad teams, got blown out uh, in some matches. I mean, got absolutely massacred by Texas. Uh, it was just not a good season for the Sooners. And then they ended up losing their bowl game against Florida State to finish out the season 6-7. and seven. First losing record since, I think, the 90s. It was just a very bad season for Oklahoma. Now, going into this year, they've had a year to work with the you know, work with the new system that they've got under Venables. They also are bringing back a lot of key positions. Dylan Gabriel coming back as the quarterback, uh, you know, transfer from UCF to fill in that mantle. He had a, you know, regardless of how bad the season turned out for Oklahoma, he didn't have a bad season last year, taking over the mantle from the quarterbacks that left through the portal. Uh, he's done a pretty good job. He's got some weapons this season. Uh, some players coming in through the portal. Austin Stogner coming in from South Carolina as the tight end. That'll help out with the offense. And they need it because Oklahoma's offense wasn't exactly the best last season because of what they were lacking in the other positions. Hopefully this year things will change with that, and I think it will. On the defensive side of the ball, we're also getting some transfers. Uh, Rondell Bothroyd as one of them uh, and Dason McCullough. Those are two of the transfers. There are some key players on here who I think will make an impact. Gentry Williams, a corner, I think will make an impact for this team. Uh, Reggie Fearson, also another player, uh, coming in as a transfer. So looking forward to this season. Um, there are some key players who I think are going to make a deep impact for Oklahoma. And Vegas seems to think the same thing as they have the over-under for Oklahoma at 9.5. So... If Oklahoma wants to go above expectations, they have to win at least 10 games this year. Will they be able to do that? I don't know. We'll just have to look at their schedule and find out. So like I previously mentioned, this is their last season in the Big 12. So we'll have to see how this plays out and uh, see if they can, you know, even make it to the championship game. It's going to be a big jump forward, I think, for Oklahoma this season, you know, with the talent that they've got in the schedule kind of playing in their favor. But let's go ahead and take a look at the schedule and see what we've got here. So they start out with a pretty easy matchup against Arkansas State. Not expecting too much out of this game. I think Oklahoma should go into this first game and dominate, start out 1-0, get on the right track, and then that should play out throughout the rest of their non-con games. SMU is up next, and regardless of what you think about SMU, they might be a decent team this year. I don't think they'll match up against the Sooners. I think uh, Oklahoma will take care of business there as well. So, you know, Oklahoma's blessed with a pretty easy uh, non-con schedule. Their last non-conference game, they're actually traveling on the road to play Tulsa. Very kind of kind of interesting that they're traveling on the road to play a group of five team. This is a, uh, it's a rare circumstance when that usually happens. Uh, so in this matchup, you know, it isn't like the Ole Miss Tulane game where I'd be leaning towards the group of five team, 
Tulsa is not a very good group of five team. I just don't think they'll match up against Oklahoma in this matchup. So give me Oklahoma to win that one and go through their non-con games 3-0 before heading out on the road again to Cincinnati. And this is going to be a fun matchup since, well, Cincinnati, this is their first season in the Big 12. How is that really going to help them this season? Uh, well, it's not going to help them, you know, schedule-wise. Cincinnati uh, losing Luke Fickle, that's going to probably play a deep part in how you know, I, I don't think they're going to be a good team this year, and I think losing Luke Fickle is going to play a deep impact in that. So with that being said, you know, I think Oklahoma takes care of business, goes out on the road, wins pretty handily over Cincinnati, and gets their first Big 12 win. Then they play Iowa State, first home game in the conference. Um, Iowa State, not a decent team either. They just don't really have a lot going for them. They're not a good team, and they're not even playing at home. Uh, so... You know, the favoritism towards, you know, Jack Trice being that stadium where teams just kind of go in and lose and unexpected matchups, that's not even going to be a case here. Not like it was anyway. Iowa State is just not a very good team. They don't have a lot going for them like I previously mentioned. So Oklahoma gets another win here. 5-0 and to start out the season heading into the tough one against the Longhorns of Texas. So this is going to be a fun matchup, I think. Mainly because if Texas is undefeated hanging into this matchup, it's going to be undefeated versus undefeated. And regardless of what you think about Oklahoma's schedule before the Texas game, it'll be a great matchup and likely will be the game that, uh, you know, is talked about on college game day the most. It's going to be where probably where game day is being featured at. And it's a neutral site in Dallas, so it's usually always a fun matchup to witness. Last year, the expectation for that game was uh, disappointing, to say the least. Texas, you know, just got in and blew out Oklahoma. I think it's going to be a lot closer this year. I think Oklahoma is going to be able to put up some some points, at least. They're not going to be donutted like last year. However, you know, Texas, I think, is just a much better team in this matchup. And I think Texas gets the win here, which means, unfortunately for Oklahoma, this is where they take their first loss, so... You know, I think Texas is just the better team in this game. Home field advantage doesn't play a part, as we know. And, you know, like I said, they've had, you know, Steve Sarkeesian for two years. Now Quinn Ewers coming back for another year. It's going to be Texas is going to probably have one of the most high-powered offenses in college football this season. And I just think Oklahoma's out of their league this year. I think it'll be a lot closer than it was last year. However, I do think Texas gets the win, which means this is where you take your first loss. After a bye week, though, you get back at home against UCF Central Florida, as some people call it. Apparently, UCF fans don't like it when you call them Central Florida. If you're a UCF fan watching this video, uh, let me know down in the comments below if that's the case. Anyway, though, big matchup here, UCF. Uh, you know, Dylan Gabriel going against his former team. Going to be a fun matchup to watch. Gus Malzahn going up uh, into Norman to play Oklahoma. This will probably be a close game, I think. And if it weren't for the bye week, this could possibly be a trap game. But with an extra week to prepare, I think Oklahoma gets the job done, beats UCF, and uh, enters bowl eligibility at 6-1 and one before their next game, a road game against the Jayhawks of Kansas. Now, Kansas, they're definitely not the team that they were years previous, you know. There's always been a joke saying that Kansas is a playoff team, sir, and all that. And no, all, honestly, nobody believes that, obviously. However, they are a team to watch this year. Bringing back a lot of key, uh, key pieces, I meant to say. Uh, Lance Leopold building up a lot on that roster. You know, he's recruiting pretty well. And Kansas is going to be a team to watch this season. They have a lot of potential, and I think we're going to see them unleash a lot of it this season. And this game is going to be a pure example of that. I think Oklahoma gets upset on the road against Kansas. Say what you want about them. Kansas is going to be a much better team this season. They won't be scraping the bottom of the barrel. I think the Jayhawks are going to get the win at home and beat Oklahoma. I don't care about what happened years previously. Uh, I think Kansas is going to be a very good team this year, and I think that'll show uh, in the scoreboard of this matchup. Now, I don't think they're going to win the Big 12 or anything. However, I do think they are going to carry the momentum and win this game against the Sooners. So you take your second loss on the road at Kansas, and then you get another road matchup against Oklahoma State. And, you know, the Bedlam matchup, always been a fun matchup to watch. 
Last year, Oklahoma still won regardless of how bad they were. Oklahoma State kind of on a steady decline. What's going on over there with Oklahoma State? Nobody knows. Mike Gundy uh, kind of, they were on a good run for the most part. And then things just kind of hit, you know, a, a downward just slope. Uh, so there's no real expectations set for this season whether or not they're going to build up or go continue to go on that downward uh spiral so in this matchup i gave you the kansas loss i'm giving you the one and one here i think you beat oklahoma state and you know advance to seven and two in in those two road matchups i think you lose one win one so if you beat kansas you lose to oklahoma state it's going to be one of those things right there both those teams while not being the best teams in the Big 12, are good enough, I think, to beat Oklahoma if they trip up. So that being said, you win against Oklahoma State, going in back at home against West Virginia. And West Virginia is kind of like that another Iowa State team this season. They're not very good. They don't have a lot going for them. It's a mystery how Neil Brown hasn't been uh, fired yet. He's definitely going to be on the hot seat this season. And if he isn't fired by this point in the season, I don't know what to say. Now, they did beat you last season. But like I mentioned previously, last year has a little merit to what's going to happen this year. So that being all that being said, I think Oklahoma gets revenge on West Virginia and goes eight and two heading into their next matchup against BYU. So this is going to be a fun team to watch as well. BYU, a lot of potential with them, probably the most potential out of any team coming new into the Big 12 out of the four that are coming in. Uh, you know, they had an average season last year. I think they're bringing back a lot of key pieces. You know, it's uh, this is a team that I think has the potential. And playing on the road against, uh, you know, it's a stadium that Oklahoma's never been to. Uh, it's going to be a rowdy environment, I imagine. And, you know, traveling on the road to play this team is always a tough environment to play. Then. So all that being said, I think you trip up again here. Take your third loss against BYU on the road. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tough game, I think, for Oklahoma. I just think BYU's got you in that matchup. It's going to be a very fun game. Probably very close game, but I will ride with the home team on that one and say that BYU gets the dub over Oklahoma. And then the last game here, TCU. So you got TCU at home now, and, you know, I already did, I already did my TCU predictions. I think, you know, with that team, they're riding high after the season that they had with Sonny Dykes. And really the popular prediction with TCU is that not necessarily have to fall off the map, but they're kind of going to go back down to reality and, you know, lose three or four games this season. And for me, I think this is one that they lose. I think Oklahoma beats TCU at home. Uh, you know, TCU losing a lot of key pieces, Max Duggan and Quentin Johnston, for, to name two of them. Uh, I just don't think they'll be nearly as dominant and as clutch as they were last season. Not that they'll fall off the map, like I said, but I just don't think they're, uh, I really don't think they're ready for this matchup here. I think Oklahoma will have enough time to prepare for this game, especially with the home field advantage. I think that'll be enough for them to get the win. And that puts Oklahoma at a prediction regular season of nine and three. So that's oh that's under i'm taking the under on oklahoma so regardless of what you think about that you know it's not a bad season all things considered definitely going to be a much bigger improvement over what you had last season already three more wins and if you get another win in the regular season uh that'll put you with a 10 win season before you head off and pack your bags to head to the best conference in college football next season so not a bad not a bad year uh so but let me know what you think down in the comments below whether you think i'm a big dumb stupid idiot for thinking that oklahoma's losing to kansas or if you think i'm the smartest person in the world that believe in that kansas has the potential to be a really good team i don't know tell me what you think down in the comments below and as always i will respond accordingly you already know that all too well go ahead and check out my other predictions if you haven't already i've done you know like i said i've done tcu i've also done Ole miss ucla uh, Iowa. Check out those teams if you're fans of any of those squads uh, in the uh, in the description. It's not in the description. It's somewhere. It's a playlist. You, you know the drill. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure, as always, you give this video a like and sub up the channel. Uh, sub up to Squid Tart if you like meme content or Squid Tart Sports if you're here for the college football content, which I imagine you're here for the latter. Anyway, again, thank you for watching, and as always, power to Tartaria.